Welcome to a podcast by OpenTheWord.org, where we discuss a bit of Bible, a bit of life, and a bit of politics. In a recent interview on an Apple fitness show called Time to Walk, actress Goldie Hawn, 77, said back in the 1960s, she had an encounter with aliens which actually touched her. She described it as being touched by the finger of God, Fox News reports. It is an interesting story, and if true, may have the hallmarks of an encounter with a fallen angel. Hi, my name is Dean Smith, and in this podcast, I want to compare famed Hollywood actress Goldie's Hond alleged encounter with an extraterrestrial with the prophet Daniel's encounter with an angel because there seems to be some similarities. Hahn was in her 20s, living in California and working as a dancer. She said during the 1960s, there were countless reports in the media of people seeing UFOs. Hahn said that one evening, she was sitting on a ledge outside her home and she looked up at the night sky and wondered about life on other planets. She said, quote, That was a time when, you know, there was a lot of UFO sightings. I remember this so clearly. I went outside my door and I sat on the little ledge and I looked up at the dark sky and I saw all these stars and all I could think of was, how far does this go? How little are we? Are we the only planet in the whole wide universe that has life on it? Unquote. But it didn't stop there. The actress then looked up to, into the night sky and spoke out loud to aliens, quote, I know you're out there. I know we're not alone. And I would like to meet you one day, Han said, unquote. About three weeks later, that brief statement would be answered and she would come in contact with two or three extraterrestrials while at a dancing job in West Covina, California. During a break, she decided to lie down in her friend's car when she heard a high-pitched sound. Looking out, Han saw two or three silver-colored aliens outside the vehicle, which she described as having triangle-shaped heads. She said they seemed to be pointing at her and talking amongst themselves about Han. Terrified by what she was seeing and not knowing if this was real or not, Han said that she immediately tried to get out of the car, but said she felt paralyzed and unable to move. She said, quote, I was paralyzed, and and I thought, oh my God, I want to get up. I didn't know if it was real or not real. Then, These aliens allegedly touched her face. She said, quote, The aliens touched me and it felt like the finger of God, Han said. It was the most benevolent, loving feeling. This was powerful. It was filled with light. This sounds strange and maybe it wasn't real, but it does have the hallmarks of an encounter with a spiritual being or more specifically a fallen angel. We know from the Bible that there are both godly angels and as well a group of fallen angels which chose to follow Satan in their rebellion against God. We read of that rebellion in Revelation chapter 12 when the archangel Michael drove Satan and a third of the angels out of heaven down to earth. In the book of Corinthians, the apostle Paul warns that that these satanic angels appear to have the ability to masquerade or disguise themselves as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14. Notice how Paul specifically referred to this fallen angel as an angel of light, which is similar to Han's description of being filled with light after the encounter. The Greek word translated as disguise in this verse speaks of Satan's ability to appear as something he is not. Which leads to the obvious question. If a demonic angel can disguise himself as an angel of light, 
Can he also appear as something else, say, an extraterrestrial? The Bible also tells us that angels have a unique ability to impact humans with a touch or a word. We see an example of this in a dramatic encounter that the prophet Daniel had with a godly angel while he and his friends were enjoying a day in the sun along the banks of the Tigris River while in captivity in Babylon. This encounter is recorded in Daniel chapter 10. When this angel first showed up in verse 8, the other men with Daniel fled in terror. Daniel would have undoubtedly joined them, but similar to Han, the angel's appearance paralyzed Daniel, causing him to fall to the ground. Daniel described what happened this way, quote, Yet no strength was left in me, for my complexion turned to a deathly pallor, and I retained no strength. But I heard the sound of his words, and as soon as I heard the sound of his words, I fell into a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. Daniel 10 verse 8, unquote. Over the next several verses, we read how this angel was able to impact Daniel by, by simply saying words and touching him. Anyone watching this, this weird things, these weird things happening to Daniel would not have associated with angelic activity unless they had a split-screen TV and saw what the angels was doing. But we read of them. In verse 9, for example, the angel spoke, and Daniel fell into a deep sleep. In verse 10, the angel touched Daniel, and he fell to his knees trembling. In verse 15, the angel spoke again, and Daniel fell flat on his face, speechless. In verse 16, the, the angel touched Daniel's lips, and the prophet was able to speak. In verses 18 and 19, the angel not only touched Daniel, but said the words, Peace, be strong, do not be afraid, take courage and be courageous. And Daniel was instantly strengthened. Now, as we read both Hans and Daniel's accounts, there is a second similarity. Han described the extraterrestrial touch as powerful and similar being, to being touched by the finger of God. Daniel said he was instantly strengthened when he was touched by the angel. So while Han described it as an, as an encounter with an extraterrestrial being, Daniel attributed what happened to him due to contact with an angel. But there is one critical difference. It is important for us to understand that when a third of the angels fell and chose to follow Satan, these demons or evil spirits didn't suddenly lose this ability to impact people through words and touch. Though what happened to Daniel was the result of an encounter with a godly angel, demonic angels, even though they have fallen away from God, still retain the same ability to affect people from within the spirits around. And we see it on display in one of the most unusual visions recorded in the Bible. Now, typically, visions found in the Bible allow us to peer into the spirits around. We see an example of that in 2 Kings 6, when Elisha's unnamed servant was terrified when he saw that there are Aramean army had surrounded their home. Elisha then prayed for his servant's eyes to be opened, and as soon as that happened, Elisha's servant saw a angelic being, literally horses and chariots of fire, had, that had, had surrounded them and were fighting on their behalf. But the book of Zechariah provides a completely different vision as it shows how those of us living in the physical earthly realm appear to those who are living in the spiritual. In his vision recorded in chapter 3, Zechariah saw Satan standing beside Joshua, who was serving as the high priest in Jerusalem at the time. We read, quote, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, 
and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him, Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1, unquote. Joshua was serving as the high priest at the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and it appears he was performing some type of service in the temple. Zechariah saw two things. First, he saw Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord. And, and then he saw Satan was standing at Joshua's side, sending a barrage of accusing and condemning words at Joshua. This was all happening in the spirits around. As he was performing his service in the temple, Joshua would not have been aware of either the angel of the Lord standing before him or Satan who was standing at his right hand, uttering words of condemnation. Secondly, Joshua would have been dressed in his elaborate high priestly garb. This is, this is how he would have appeared in the physical realm. But that is not how he looked like or how he appeared to those who were looking at him from the spiritual realm. In verse 3, we are told that Joshua was wearing filthy garments. The Hebrew word soy, S-O-I, translated filthy, is literally the English word for, are you ready? Poop. Now, Joshua would not have been wearing clothes covered in excrement while working in the temple. Nevertheless, this is how he appeared to those in the spiritual realm because Joshua was feeling the spiritual impact of the condemning and accusing words coming from the mouth of Satan. He would not have heard those satanic utterances, but he would have felt condemned, and how he, and how he felt is how he appeared in the spiritual realm. Similar to Daniel's encounter with the godly angel, the words that Satan, this fallen angel, was throwing at Joshua from the spiritual realm were having an impact. But over the next several verses, we are told that the angel of the Lord rebuked Satan. God then ordered that Joshua's filthy garments be removed and new clothes be put on the high priest. Again, Joshua would have been totally unaware of all this, but suddenly his spirit would have lifted as the accusation stopped and new spiritual clothes were put on him. This story demonstrates the ability of fallen satanic angels to impact our daily lives. So while Goldie Hawn attributed what happened to Burr as being the result of an encounter with extraterrestrials, the Bible speaks of similar things happening through encounters with angels, both good and fallen ones or satanic ones. This leads to the obvious question. What exactly did Goldie Hawn encounter in West Covina, California in the 1960s? It may be another reminder for believers why we need to make sure we are wearing the full armor of God that Paul speaks about in Ephesians chapter 6. Thanks for joining me on this podcast, and we'll catch you again. Thanks again for joining us on our podcast. Please check out our website at opentheword.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to receive notifications of future broadcasts. As well, please take a moment to provide a rating and even a review. Thanks again for listening.